We're going to go over how uh, we insert the arterial line here in cardiac under sterile conditions, uh, and I'll try to give you tips which will maybe ensure better success. First of all, when you do this thing in general, you want the patient's arm to be parallel to the table. A lot of patients have a tendency to pronate, and I find that if you pronate and you go in, you're not really over the pulse. So to maximize your success, get the hand parallel to the table. Now that may mean you may have to externally rotate the patient's arm or move the arm board, but try to um, get it parallel. Having said that, some people will still pronate after, but I'll show you what I do to minimize that. Take the arm board. When you make an arm board, get a decent roll and put the roll in the middle. And you, what you want to do is you want to roll one finger breadth below the crease. Not here, not here, not off to one side. So I use my thumb and I kind of put it in here and I measure and that's one finger breadth below. And if you notice, I also I put the oximeter inside so it kind of doesn't pull away. Some patients are very strong, so I use cloth tape to, just to secure the arm board, hand to the arm board. After that, I use plastic. Do not secure the thumb or the palm down in the initial, because you don't want to chronically or for hours keep the, the thumb hyperextended. You may want to use it when you put it in. So just go below and around once, and you know don't cut the circulation off with it. Now, what I like to do is I remove any kind of armband and stuff, and I come right to the end of the arm board. This way, if I get a hematoma, I can't get in. It gives me enough space to go back. If you put the arm here, you, your field is kind of smaller. So I go right around, and you notice I got the um, oximeter inside, and I come around, and so, and make sure it's not, like I said, too tight. Now, if you look at him, he still kind of wants a rock. What I do then to keep the hand parallel is I just put a piece of tape temporary so you can either do the thumb or I just go across the palm and I put it around the table so the arm is kind of um, parallel. Now I put the local in. Um, before I do it sterile I put the local in um, so what I do is I try to go for a point that's about a finger breadth below this crease. Now you see everybody has kind of that crease. So I go about here and I feel where the pulse is, pinch her, and I go in there in a little skin wheel. Now what I do is, just in case I get a hematoma, I kind of follow it up. Since we're going to do this sterilely, I don't want to have to break scrub to, so I kind of come up in a line just along so that if I get a hematoma, I can't hit it. Maybe I can hit it a little bit more uh, proximally. Okay, now that's in, we're going to prep. We, now we're not going to scrub. We're going to put it in sterilely here. So we just put on sterile gloves and we have it prepared. And there's a little kit here. So I'll show you how we do it. Now, like any other surgical field, whatever, we have a little prep stick, kind of like one of these shoe polish things. And you start it kind of in the middle and you work your way around and you go wider and wider and wider and you never come back in and you go tape to tape side to side now when you drape it whatever is uh, not prepped needs to be covered or whatever is exposed needs to be prepped either way you look at it if you look at these little towels that they give you they have two corners and you just pull them apart so I go and I, I kind of they only give you two so here I, I go up the side I kind of turn the corner and I come back. Some people do that kind of triangle like Boy Scout, Girl Scout kerchief thing and that's fine too. And I take the second one, I pull it across and I cover it. Now notice that there's no openings, there's no, you can't see and this is all prep so it's sterile. Now we take the angiocath and the way I do it is I take the back off. If you look at the angiocath it's got a bevel, a bevel side. So I start with the bevel side up. And if you look at it, you see that the plastic is not, obviously doesn't stick out as far as the needle. The way I do this is I hold it and stand 90 degrees to the arm, not at kind of a right angle like this. Though sometimes in a trauma or something, you know, you can't get in there, but, but ideally 90 degrees. Hold it so you can see the uh, barrel, so you can see the blood flash back. What I do is I start and not at 45 degree angle, but 15 to 30 degrees with the bevel up. 
And what I do is I come in and it's not good enough to get a flash. It actually has to be filling the barrel, like coming back slowly, you know. When you do that, if you have good control, it is possible that the needle is in and the plastic is still outside the lumen. So you're going to have to advance from that point a few millimeters, and it's very hard to see, so that the plastic is inside the uh, lumen of the vessel. When you do that, I usually turn it 180 so the short side of the bevel is in advance. But even if you don't, when you advance, the blood still needs to be uh, coming back very, very slowly. If it stops coming back, then you're up against the wall, and then maybe you have to pull back a little until it's coming all the way back. When you're at that point, just slide the catheter off. You don't have to kind of twist it off or curl it off or rotor rooter it off. And you'll even see that blood comes up the lumen and it should be in. So let us attempt that and um, see if we have any success here. Come down under the skin and then we just hold it. I don't keep my finger on the pulse. Some people do. Now you notice here, you see that the blood is coming and it's not a flat, it's coming back. So I go 180, which is just a small, then I advance slightly. Now you see when I advance, it, it stopped coming back. So it's not going to be in. It's going to be up against the wall. So let me pull it back just a hair and see. Now you see it's coming back again. And so it should be. Now hopefully, look, let's look in between and see if we slide it off and if it's in. And look, voila, it is. And if you look at the end of the needle, blood's still coming out. So it's in. Now. I want you to be very neat. So how are you going to do All these towels are sterile. Put the blue cloth under here. Your hands are sterile. Cover the thing. Occlude the end with your thumb. Now, if you notice there's blood on my hand, I don't want you to touch everything with the blood on your hand. So wipe it on the towel, because it's all sterile. This is still all sterile. Now, you take this, and I usually have it queued up, but uh, hand it to me. Now, when you connect this, obviously there's going to be a point when you disconnect where it's going to bleed. That's why I have the blue drape under it. Do not turn the catheter. Just turn this. So watch. We let it go. It bleeds. And you twist it. Now you can bend it up a little. It's flexible. Now you see there's blood. All these towels are clean. So you take this. Now you can't wipe with this part because there's blood underneath it. So you have to go back and you have to actually turn it around. And you see you turn it around. And you notice there's no blood anywhere. Now, you can't tape with this down, so you've got to learn how to do this. Switch hands without having five people helping you. So, you take the tape off, and you just toss it down. Now, I like to go around the thumb, so I put it around the thumb. And now, this piece can fall like a fishing float, so you've got to make sure that it's secured. And if it won't stay secured, maybe ask somebody to hold it. But it looks like it'll do. Now, we put the bio patch on. This bio patch. It's not made to go on top, otherwise there wouldn't be a slit. Open it, lift the catheter up, you can lift the catheter up, and slide it back so it's underneath. Now we have a nice little dressing here, has a little window. You want the bio patch in the window to be in. So the way I do this is I just take off the, the one end, and I kind of get the window. And if you look at this thing, when you pull off the other end of the dressing, there's kind of a little wider part. And then there's a little, it's kind of light up. I don't lay it down. I let it follow the natural curve, and I kind of pinch it here. And then you see this is a very nice dressing. It has very good adhesive. Now, they give you a second piece. Some people put it here. Lately, I've kind of been putting it up here. Anyway, it's, really, it's good adhesive. If you look at this thing, there's a little part on this uh, vamp so that the nurses can draw blood in the ICU. You don't want to occlude that. And I, when we tuck the arms, I don't want it to dig in. So what we have here is a couple of two by twos. Take one two by two and fold it longitudinally. So it'll go like underneath this. And then take a little tape. I guess I should have torn it before. And, um, you know, get it. Uh, Secure, you know, nice. So this way it pads with arms are tough. So, and then don't tent it. Just mold it down. So, you know, kind of comes here. And if you want, since lately I've been doing this, you know, this piece, like I said, it's pretty, pretty good adhesive. You know, just kind of. And then maybe one more piece over here, and uh, it's done. Clean up, throw away your shop.
Don't cover it up with any towels, and uh, you're good to go.